Welcome back to The Mining Pod. Today on the show, we're joined by Louis Guthman, ecosystem developer at Starkware. Starkware is building a zero-knowledge rollup for multiple chains, including Bitcoin, that promises to dramatically change how Bitcoin can scale without sacrificing security or Bitcoin simplicity. In this first episode, we talk about how zero-knowledge rollups are different from Lightning, how Starks can increase fees on Bitcoin, and why Starkware is going through all the effort. Louis, welcome to the Mining Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you very much for hosting. Really excited for this conversation. And I'm just thrilled that we got to line you guys up because Starkware is doing a lot of interesting things, not only in the Ethereum space, but you guys are moving into the Bitcoin space. Well, you guys are Bitcoiners and I'd say just say like cryptographers in general. So maybe we can get like a little perspective on yourself, what you do at Starkware and then what Starkware itself does. And then we'll move into the conversation about what Starkware is building for Bitcoin right now? Okay, awesome. Um, so my name is Louis Gutman. I've been, so, I mean, I'm going to trigger a couple of people here, but I've been in crypto for six years uh, and I've been at Starkware for over three years. Um, uh, I'm the ecosystem lead. Uh, my role is to, um, so to foster the ecosystem of developer and builders developing using Starkware tech, and we're going to get a tiny bit more about what Starkware do in a few seconds, uh, and to, uh, you know, basically go places and explain to uh, what the technology that uh, Starkware building called Zero Knowledge Proof can help uh, in crypto at large, uh, mostly on Ethereum right now and potentially on Bitcoin. And so uh, about Starkware itself, so Starkware is a company focusing on cryptography. Uh, a specific type of cryptography called zero knowledge proofs. Uh, zero knowledge proof are um, a relatively old invention in computer science. Uh, they date back to roughly the 80s, uh, but they became practical and useful roughly in the last seven years. Um, and, and the cool thing about zero knowledge proof, the main usage that we're seeing with it is privacy. That's what, what Cash is doing. And actually, what Monero is doing also now, um, and um, in the context of scaling, meaning how do you by scaling when you find this way, how do you, can you do more transaction on the same hardware? And so, for instance, how can Ethereum be running more transaction on the same hardware, and how can Bitcoin run more transaction on the same hardware? And more transaction can be two things: just more transaction itself, or do more things that are would not be practical with the lack of scalability. Um, and so Starkware focusing of, is focusing on the second type, which is the scalability aspect. And those zero knowledge proof are in this context also called validity proof, meaning they are a kind of a compression algorithm that enables you to compress computation in such a way that it's extremely fast to verify. This use case of fast verification is something fundamental to blockchains in, uh, at large. Because as you may know, the reason why you know Ethereum Bitcoin as scaling issues is because we are limited by the cheapest machine running on the network. And so, you know, when people compare the TPS of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, they are literally comparing an, an orange to an apple to a Ferrari. Uh, we're, not talking, we're not talking about the same thing, right? Like, like uh, uh, because the target machine of Bitcoin is a Raspberry Pi, which is roughly the cheapest computer you can find. Like, I should be able to run Bitcoin practically on the Raspberry Pi. If you're saying, you know what, that's that's a bit harsh. Let's say a high-end uh, laptop. So for instance, I managed to sync if from scratch on my 2021 MacBook Pro. And, and Solana is saying, you know, so roughly a $2,500 machine. And Solana is saying, you know what, maybe $2,000 machine is a bit extreme, like, you know, com uh, companies are spending a hundred times the amount every month for their practices, for their the system. So why can't we have a $2,000 machine per month? And so we're not talking about the same. Thing. And so um, the beauty of zero knowledge proof or validity proof, which I'm going to use afterwards, is that they are enabling you to break this weakest point, to make it in such a way that the miners have, can have very, very strong machines Miners, you know, validate, I mean, miners or, or block proposers to take a staking aspect. Uh, 
and basically pre-process the work for the rest of the network and the Raspberry Pi in their phone to verify what they did. And so Starkware is a leading company in the field of vanity proof. Uh, we have been running for almost four or five years now. Uh, the company was founded by uh, three cryptographers and um, uh, uh, the Uri was the CEO, respectively uh, Eli Ben Sasson, Mikhail Rabiev, Uri, Uri Coloni, and Alessandro Cesa. And since then, we um, have been working with various companies in the space, uh, most notably uh, DYDX, Sorer, Immutable, which are respectively different, doing like non custodial aperture trading, uh, Web3 fantasy football, and um, general purpose NFT R2, um, which is, and our, all of them are billion dollar companies. And um, for the last year now, we have been focusing on um, building StarkNet, which is this layer two uh, right now on top of ETH, but this, the, for the all purposes, 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 they could be also on top of Ethereum or Bitcoin. And um, to create this, to enable this, this L2 to work, and we're gonna, we developed this new tech called Cairo. And Cairo is this new programming language that makes it efficient to write code that can compile, that can run, can be proven. And so the whole idea of an L2 and StarkNet being a ZK rollup as an L2 is that we can make smart contracts that are basically verifiable by the base layer, if you, or maybe in the future Bitcoin, in, in a compressed way, in a way that the main layer do not actually see what's going on on the, on the L2. And so this is actually the main difference with Bitcoin, with, L2, with sidechains, you know, like something like Liquid or something like RSK, is that when you go on an L2, you are you have no your security relying 100% on the L1, and so what we have been doing right now about Bitcoin that what we just described do not work today on Bitcoin, um, but Bitcoin has a very nice perp- um, nice things to it, which is the protocol is extremely simple. And so one project we have been seeing gathering a bit of team, you know, built by third parties, not by Starkware, built by third parties, is actually um, what we call Capri or Zero Sync. And it's basically a way to turn Bitcoin into a succinct chain, a MINAT type of chain, a recursive chain. In such a way, Bitcoin, without the hard fork, without any change in the protocol, can be verifiable on your phone. You could run a full node of Bitcoin on your phone. And so this is what um, I guess triggered the, the, the context of this, of, the, of this podcast because this idea of being able to run full node on your phone is as old as age in the context of Bitcoin, and it's finally getting practical without any sort of fork or change in the system, which obviously will not be practical, will not be realistic uh, in the context of Bitcoin. Let's go down that in a second, but I want to go back to what you said earlier about transactions per second, compression, and different parts of Bitcoin. Uh, that would need to be changed, perhaps, in order to do what a lot of people want to do. W- what is the fundamental thing that Starkware and other people are seeing that needs uh, that Bitcoin needs? Like, is it does Bitcoin need more transaction throughput? Does Bitcoin need smart contracts because of applications uh, that they want to develop? Is you, 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 what is? Go ahead. No, you, you don't want me to do me like you, you want me to trigger like a whole uh, flame on myself. The more here. triggered people, the better. <laughs> oh, honestly, God. no, no. So, so <laughs> the truth is, um, uh, the truth is, it, it's um, I'm going to trigger a couple of people here. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to say a few things. Bitcoiners were always right about ETH, but they were so righteous about it, and 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 so which means the following thing. That's and, going to trigger a lot of people. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to explain what you mean by this. Is that yes, uh, it was true from the get go that Eve couldn't scale. That was true from the get go. That was true. Yeah. But what I blame, you know, some of like a, a, a significant chunk of the community, Bitcoin community, is that they don't think that things can improve, and they are very hard time admitting that, for instance, the 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 ability that Eve, the economical opportunity that Ethereum developed any company like Starkware to actually do their R&D and spend the energy and resources and getting the funding to make those technology that were the ones that were needed in the first place true. And so 
um, it's what, what, what I'm like, Ethereum are extremely optimistic, Bitcoin are extremely pessimistic, and the, the, this is where the 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 the, 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 the story goes because. It is realistic for today, for if today to scale. Now, it is like we like Starcore is proving it, and others proving it. Um, I mean, pr- scaling as as a big word, and and, and as I said, like it really depends what you mean. If, if if a laptop is too expensive, so yes, Ethereum is not scaling. But um, but the technologies that were developed for if now makes scaling on top of Bitcoin practical. The, this is where. Um, so if you ask me what's what's needed on Bitcoin, I don't think that Bitcoin needs smart contract per se. But Bitcoin do need um, for for it to be successful. Good do need a way to enable double pegging. You know, like uh, uh, having sort of like you know, for instance, my ability to lock USDC from one hand and lock E on Bitcoin on the other, so I can actually do swaps at scale, not not just atomic swaps, but like you know, in an efficient way. And um, L twos which were defined, you know, in the context of if makes 100% sense in the context of Bitcoin. And so we kind of actually do need the smallest form of contract for, I mean, for it to happen on Bitcoin. I mean, by contract, I mean, uh, it's called specifically two things, called recursive covenants. And uh, we need uh, a bit more flexibility on the mathematical operation we can do on um, on the base layer. So, so there will be a requirement for soft fork at some point if we want to have um, uh, to have um, to have um, L2s on top of Bitcoin. And the reason why L2 are very interesting in the context of Bitcoin is because the main issue Bitcoin face without you know going around the, the butchers is fees. There is no, not a, um, a very, um, there is not an healthy fee market on Bitcoin, even during the bull market. I mean, we can discuss uh, the fee market on, if, on Ethereum right now, but there was an, um, an if, like, it's even today, like we are, there are, the blockers still feel on Ethereum. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure we can look it up precisely, but roughly there is an healthy fee market on ETH, there is no, the fee market on Bitcoin is a lot less um, logical, and and it's become come from a tension of the whole imperative. Like I, you shouldn't spend your Bitcoin, at the same time you need people to spend their Bitcoin to pay them for the fees, and so you need to have high paying members of network to maintain security over time, and those high paying members are people who are gathering a lot of economical value from the transaction, and L twos have are serious contender. To provide this sort of efficient fee market, of um, not efficient but uh, uh, flourishing fee market. Let's go back to that that same idea and stick with it for a little bit, and then talk about implementation, which of course is a fun topic as everyone loves governance decisions on any sort of chain, right? But for L twos, you enable a lot of off chain computation, and then you verify it on chain. That's the most simple way I know how to describe it. And there's a few different models to do that. There's the optimistic roll perspective. Z- DK rollups. There's other stuff out there as well, of course. But the main point is to have that off-chain computation, sync it to the main chain, and then derive some sort of economic value from it. How does this compare to, say, Lightning, or how does this compare to any sort of other L2 design? L2 being very generalistic here. Some people wouldn't call Lightning an L2, but very generalistic here. How would you uh, compare what Starkware is doing with Bitcoin or with Ethereum to what Bitcoiners are mostly familiar with. So, so it's, um, so I might trigger a few people here. Uh, but so, so I, I mean, listen, I respect lighting, uh, lightning as the, the beautiful thing of being working today. I mean, as it's a system that can work within the constraint of Bitcoin today. Um, now, and I think it's no one's, um, uh, like everyone is aware of this and even lightning people, right. That, um, uh, the, the, the lightning of the few issues, which is the security of the model, depend on on, on the economy. Uh, basically, it works on economics, and and there is a lot of like very hedge cases of um, you know in with, with the imbalance uh, wallet. Like there is a bunch of things that are not very well rationalized. So when you want to work like a, in a blockchain system, you want to work in a system that is resistant to worst case scenario. You want to think about it as 
what happened in the worst case scenario. And then you, you build on top of that. And so uh, the, the main advantage when you have with uh, ZK rollup uh, and optimistic rollup is that it brings the, the, question, the question of, uh, especially ZK rollup, I won't get too much into the optimistic rollup um, because personal biases. Um, Actually, uh, yeah, okay, I can, can delve into that. But uh, the 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 ZK rollup has the advantage of being able to bring that question of the trustlessness and the security away from the economic layer to the technical layer. And when you work on the technical layer, then you have it's it's a very well defined system because you have a system. Here is my trust assumption or my security model. Here is my system. Am I feeling the, the requirement. The problem that you have, and there is no externality because it's pure technique, it's pure math or pure whatever. It's like it's it's a pure, well-defined system that do not have externalities. In an economic system, the, the, the thing that the main issue you have is it's very hard sometimes to think about the externalities. And, and I'm going to give you an example. Uh, people think about actually example coming from Ethereum. People think of proof of stake as a system, you know, where it would be actually much more expensive than attacking, uh, than, you know, buying the equivalent amount of, of uh, ISIC to attack the system, right? Like, a, But an externality that actually no one thought about until recently is you actually don't need to buy that ETH. You just need to create a centralized exchange attractive enough to let people deposit, and then you stake, and then all of a sudden you are a 25% majority order of, uh, of ETH on your on, on stake. Like, so... When you bring some stuff from the pure technical layer to uh, to the economic layer, then you have side, like edge edge cases that are hard to think about and be, in turn can literally turn your system upside down. MEV, for instance, until twenty twenty one or twenty twenty or twenty twenty one was thought to not be existent. Now there is a single system that would not think about MEV because when you create technical opportunity then this is where the, the, the attacks comes in. Like, where can I sneak in? Where can I take advantage of that uh, undefined aspect of the system? And so, this, by the way, the same way people from the proof of work, uh, pro, the proof of work, the miners, would tell you that. Like, we tell you, you know, the advantage is that the security model of proof of work is well, relatively well-defined. It's expensive, you know, I need to pay upfront X amount of money to, to buy my thing, then I can run it for this duration. Like, the, the economical... Risk reward is unknown because you have the version of the price, but you, you still have like someone like a, a clear way to define the security model. And proof of stake has a lot of advantage, but do have like some triggering details that could be edge cases. Uh, same thing for the light difference between Lightning and Bitcoin and, and, and the and ZK Rubs. ZK Rubs bring everything to the technical layer, meaning I can check that my system fits it. And Lightning has a lot of like oh, how do I bring uh, a, a 7 billion people on it? Uh, what's the cost, of, uh, the cost of capital of being a hub on the network? Uh, all those questions that are hard to answer and creates, can create some instability in the way the system can be run in the long term. And so this is kind of the main difference. The difference, bring everything on tech level makes it simpler. That makes sense. I love that description. I, I want to go into the off-chain activity and how that, comes back on the Bitcoin and generates fees. Because that was a nice note you made earlier about how Bitcoin has a fee problem and solutions like Starkware and ZK Rollups could bring more fees to Bitcoin, therefore more revenue for miners, increased security revenue, obviously all that good stuff. For off-chain computation, what are we talking about generally? Are we talking about DEXs? Are we talking about just any sort of general DAP? Could it be anything that we don't even know about yet? That's a very good question. But today we are, so right now, I don't know if you know on Twitter, like there is a rise of app chains. Uh, that's a, it's a new word coming out, app chain. So funny enough, app chain, if you think about it, has been around for a while. Like, you know, I mean, Luna was an app chain, I guess. Uh, it was more an ecosystem, I guess. But uh, on ETH, um, we already have app chain, which are specifically Sorer, Immutable, DYTX, ZKSync V1, um, which are app, uh, Polygon Hermes, uh, which are, App specific one operation, one type of operation only chains. So uh, the same way Aztec is a privacy app chain, it provides privacy and in that, it has an app chain. It's an L2 that has one single sequencer and that was one thing and one thing only. Um, and so 
the the type of operation you can get as an app chain is various. You can get basically anything you want. You can have uh, DYDX, a perpetual non-custodial exchange. So you don't get hacked. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, uh, I mean, the, we all been there for the various acts of, uh, I don't know, like, uh, Bitfimex in 2018 or, uh, or um, I don't know, who was hacked uh, Binance 2019, if I recall correctly, it was 2020. I don't remember when it was. I mean, we've been there. We've been around for, for hacks, right? So uh, that's the first one. The second one is um, NFT, NFT marketplace or NFT universe. So right now in, on, Star, on, on Starkware, we have two main players on this. We have Sorare. And so if you're not familiar with that, Sorare is the leading, uh, probably the, world, the, the, the only Web3 game that actually makes money. Uh, for real, not through token, not through shitcoin. It actually makes money. Uh, they are a $4 billion company, equity-based, raised with uh, SoftBank. They are make selling for a lot of money um, card of a soccer player and they just bought the NBA and then just bought the baseball league in the US and they have Serena Williams in their board. It's like very serious company, real science stuff. And they have their own environment, their own L2, where they do their operation and they pay security back to if you. Same thing for Immutable, which is doing the same thing, but like more as a general purpose L2 for NFTs where anyone can mean the NFT for cheap and settle them back, back to three. And so those apps are making money. They are self-contained, don't need cust- do not need composability, self-contained app that are making money and are willing to pay for security, uh, for alignment with interests with the community, underlying community, and, and, and so they're doing so. Um, and, and so for, for Bitcoin, because each transaction is undifferentiable from the protocol perspective, um, there is kind of no reason, even if you do a billion dollar transaction to pay $10 of fees, you can just pay the minimal fee to get included. I won't, I won't get into the real risk and all of that. Let's assume that doesn't happen, right? But, um, but, uh, but the, 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 what you want is actors that want to compete for inclusion. They want to raise the, 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 the V-byte to a lot to potentially replace to 50% or 100% or 200% of the block reward. And so this is kind of what we are, we did, we are seeing on the, in the context of ETH and what we, hope, we, we should hope to see at some point in the context of Bitcoin. Gotcha. It's really interesting to see how, like, how these like, app chains could trickle down into mining revenue. That's something, of course, miners are highly incentivized to think about. And, I, and once we get to the governance talk uh, in a few moments here, it'd be interesting to get your thoughts about how like, those pressures are going to influence any implementation of something like this. But before we go, I will, before we go into that, rather, I want to talk about some of the costs for bringing about something like uh, Starkware or any sort of generalized rollup onto Bitcoin. Of course, when Lightning came about, you had to have more or less a soft fork, which some people would say was a little bit more onerous than I thought. You had to increase the, the data size and nodes had to store from was like 2 millibytes to 2.4 millibytes. And there's been a lot of conversations over the years about the impacts of Segway and whether it was fair or not, given uh, the benefits that Lightning would have in the future, right? It's highly experimental. For ZK rollups, what are some of the expected costs to Bitcoin in order to get this live? Is there more pressure on the nodes? Is all this data stored off-chain? Do you have, where do you store it once it's stored off-chain? What are some of the things that Bitcoiners would have to get used to in a ZK rollup-friendly Bitcoin world? So that's actually that's a very fascinating question um, because the sync with... So we briefly before uh, we briefly talked before about the uh, K pre and zero sync, which is like this succinct Bitcoin full node. Uh, so what I didn't this what I call succinct, what I meant by it is that in a succinct Bitcoin full node, you can remove whole history, all witnesses. You only need to keep the UTXO set, add the current block. That's the ultimate vision. I mean, you can argue about the detail of implementation here, but roughly speaking, the ultimate vision of a dynamic ZK Bitcoin without for network network from the chain of the protocol is to say that everyone will just you know 
at the same time, I'm mining a new block. I'm producing a proof of that block, which also proves the, the whole series of blocks in the past. And now I have a new proof and the current UTX set. And that's it. That's all I need. I don't need anything else. And so in those cases, you can argue that, you know, you can even there increase SegWit. You could even argue to that history doesn't matter anymore. Um, that's actually a discussion I had with a, a couple of Bitcoiners, like what justifies the current block size on, on Bitcoin? And the answer is, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> it's, it was basically, no one wants to touch that, that kind of, that kind of, uh, of war. Uh, but but, uh, but uh, the, the thing is that you can easily argue that if you have a, a ZK um, proving, continuous ZK proving of Bitcoin, which, as I said, is not submit to, to, to fork. It's not, it's not requiring a fork, per se, to happen. You can easily argue that you don't have to wait for history anymore. You don't have to carry that history anymore. And so, so um, what now? This is just a comment about the, the the whole debate about SegWit and so on. Like how can zk actually solve that debate per se? Um, but now let's to go back to uh, to the to the main issue, which is uh, the actual cost of proving a star operation on top of Bitcoin. So this is poorly analyzed yet. Uh, in the following sense, it, there is only one work that Starkware financed with the Human Rights Foundation for, by a guy called uh, John Light, uh, who is, I believe, used to work at RSK. I'm not sure exactly what he's done. He's working on a report, um, on a report for ZQ rollups on top of Bitcoin. Um, we might have more visibility on what can be done. I mean, I have a few direction ideas, but you know, it's not a report. Um, now, what I can say is that today, a, a stark proof weights a a roughly 50 kilobytes, which is well behind, within the, the realm of includable in the context of Bitcoin, like, you know, one gigabyte per block. Um, so in, the, the question is, and actually this goes back to the question about uh, up return, which is, uh, does, like, should, thing, should, thing, fee, should things be sorted by fees? If I am a high winning, I'm a high payer of fees, is my transaction more value, as valuable as an actual Bitcoin transaction? And some would tell you, no, that's not what Bitcoin, you are, you are spamming the network, you are, you are, uh, you are um, uh, spamming the network. I mean, that's, that's an argument I never understood. That's my two cents, but you know, uh, like, who are you to judge what I'm doing? Like, you know, and usually it's funny because the people who say that tend to be like very libertarian. Or something like very, the very strict on those rules. Like I don't know, it never makes it never made sense to me. But that's personal thing. Um, and so, <laughs> I know exactly I, who you're talking about there. By the I'm way, not, but I'm I won't not making any comment here. I do not know him. <laughs> I, I I do not know who I'm talking about here. Uh, I just it just can't make sense uh, to me. I mean, I guess we all read the same article. Uh, and so and so, um, I mean, if it's spam, I mean, is it spam? Maybe. Uh, and it's not spam. Um, I don't know. From my perspective, uh, someone paying fees is someone paying fees. So it's hard for me to judge that. So um, in terms of impact, we were talking roughly probably about um, 50, uh, 50 kilobyte, maybe 75, let's say 75 for the sake of uh, discussion, maybe 100 kilobyte. Let's say 100 kilobyte for the sake of discussion. And this 100 kilobyte would include, um, could include 100 million, I mean, 100,000, a million, a million transactions. Uh, but transaction, you know, I also don't like to talk transaction because a transaction that, you know, just do a transfer of token uh, from A to B is not the same as a transaction that just, you know, arbitrage across uh, five different uh, decks. It's not exactly the same type of transaction, right? So, but let's say transaction. And, and so, um, so, so, like the, 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 the weight of the network would be just computed in terms of, like, the V byte is question is a, is a compute of time, right? Like the the the, the, the gas on uh, the, the gas the, the fee on Bitcoin is uh, of course length size, but it, it's a, it's an estimation of time running time. And so, like on any chain, by the way, like if you look at gas or that, it's it's a question of running time. And so uh, we just we we need analysis to know how much how much time it takes to run that operation, and then to check. Uh, the the practicality of uh, of it on, on Bitcoin in terms of proof size and verification we are well within the the realm of practical uh, to give you another of magnitude a proof verification takes two hundred millisecond uh, not two hundred I'm sorry uh, two millisecond three millisecond uh, a signature verification I guess on Bitcoin right now might be anywhere I don't know exactly that numbers but for a single signature 
maybe 20, uh, 20 microseconds, 200 microseconds. I don't know exactly. So we are within the realm of, of well within acceptable. Like when we maybe 10x longer, but it's 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 well beneath the 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 threshold for it to be risky. Okay, there's so many questions I could ask on top of that, but we only have so much time left. So I'm going to actually jump over to the the implementation question, which of course is this might be the most difficult question. Like the the software is out there, like you have said, or at least is being worked on. A lot of the technical stuff is being is known or implemented. The economics are more or less understood, but the Governance issue continues to be very difficult for every single chain. Uh, in terms of implementing some sort of Stark on top of Bitcoin, what would that look like? Uh, you mentioned earlier that at first you wouldn't need any sort of soft fork, but later maybe you do need that. How would this occur? So, so my take on the topic is that I mean, the, the non the, the the pure external system is just kind of a proof of state, a proof of work, like a, a proof of like a POC, proof that a proof mm-hmm. of concept of what Starks can bring to Bitcoin. Yeah, um, that's just like you know, just showcasing, guys, we did something cool. Just have a look, please yeah. trust yeah. us. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, and, and so you know, and then the then the hardship start. Uh, you say, okay, now let's talk beeps and. Listen, the truth is, I am no, I don't have the credibility to push such a bit. I yeah. no one in the ecosystem, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, no one knows me. And if I wanted to push it, it would be a tremendous amount of work. Uh, not a tremendous as in building the trust, building, I'm not attacking Bitcoin, then showing that, you know, especially where I'm coming from, right? That I'm doing, I'm coming from the right reason. The good thing though is that we're starting to start where historically has good reason, good good uh, relationship with a lot of Bitcoiners. Um, to name a few, Andrew Puerta is a friend of the of Starkware. I mean, you know, just to name a few, because he actually there is a picture of him with Starkware T-shirt. He's like a collector. Not very few people got it. Uh, this one actually, uh, he, he got it. Uh, <laughs> no, no one else gets it. Gets it. Uh, very few people gets it. Uh, so Andrew is uh, even a guy who you know been interesting Bitcoin since 2019, at least 2019. I don't know. I met him in the office once. Um, uh, Ross Jeff is showing a lot of interest recently. Um, I talked to, uh, I don't want to, to give name because I don't know if he did. To, I mean, I, I talked publicly with uh, Ruben Somsen, uh, with a b- bunch of others that I can't name because I, you know, we are, it's the weather public, so I don't want to uh, say to drop name for the sake of dropping names. But, um, but so we're starting to get like a lot of interest from historical, oh, Joey Mirabin is a, is a, is a good friend of Starkware too. Uh, I would say, and um, and and so I mean, we are pushing. Uh, I'm, I'm, my role is to educate. My role is to say, guys, you know what? Don't believe me. Just have a look. Like you cannot, you, you won't trust me anyway. It's fine. Um, you don't know me. You, I'm coming from from a place you don't often don't like. Uh, don't trust me. Like you know, uh, don't trust very. Just very far. Just read the code. Read the sources. Read the papers. Read what has been built. What we're trying to do, see that we that what what we are what people are building is is just fun, you know, it's good, it's useful, and and see, uh, I would love to see it coming. I mean, no, my my my, I'm a, I love Bitcoin. I love I love Bitcoin. Like generally, you know, I, I it's I got into crypto through Bitcoin, and 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 uh, the, the the protocol is so nice and pretty and beautiful and you know lean, and so so what in terms of governance, uh, it would be obviously. A lot of work. I have a bet, a nice cream bet with my boss that we might get a, a targeting inclusion within six years. Uh, I this is like a very high risk bet. Uh, yeah, it is. Honestly, it's, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I um, he doesn't believe me, uh, but it's my, it's my, uh, it's something I would really want to see because uh, I just don't see a future where it, where it, there, it doesn't happen. Honestly, that's my main issue. Where what's the future? If Bitcoin do not allow to do things, because I mean I don't want to rely on Binance to trade my Bitcoin or or to even buy my Bitcoin to to be more uh, <laughs> you know I want to DCS using you know my uh, USDC and 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 buy it directly directly through network in a non custodial way and that is something that Bitcoin did not allow you to do today and that's that's a sh- it's a shame. Yeah, I love this last point you're bringing up, and I just want to add a little bit more fuel to the fire before we close out. What is the rationale behind all this? Like, what is the reason behind it? We have Ethereum, we have smart contracts in Ethereum, we have high throughput chains, and are not as secure as Bitcoin. 
They're not as simple and as beautiful as you said about Bitcoin. So there's a stark difference there. But what is the rationale for implementing a, a ZK rollup on top of Bitcoin? I mean, Bitcoin is everyone's first love. And uh, and so, you know, you. I mean, that's, that's basically the truth. Like, I mean, uh, if Bitcoin is everyone's first love. Bitcoin is by far, by a mile, the simplest protocol around. And being simple, and by the way, I mean the community is right about that. Being simple is key for, 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 um, for future. Oh, by the way, something I didn't say that also adding Stark on Bitcoin, you know, bringing Stark, you also solve a lot of problems that might appear in the future, like post quantum security and so on. Just we focus on the fee model, but there are other things that we actually uh, Stark provide. But that's beside the point. Uh, the, the the real reason um, why is uh, is uh, you know uh, care. I, I just care. I mean, we just care. We, I mean, care in the sense that Bitcoin is great. Just uh, and, and and it's it's. I want to hold Bitcoin because Bitcoin is. Okay, let me give you an example. The OFAC uh, shit show. I kind of hope that, like, look. Actually, this is interesting because the reason you know Bitcoiners sometimes talk about MEV, they don't really because the MEV doesn't exist on Bitcoin or like for any particular reason it doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, you can argue for edge cases, but let's, let's assume it doesn't exist. Um, yeah. And so, you know, forbidding a, a, a transaction to a specific person or a specific contract is unheard of in Bitcoin and, and won't be heard of because it doesn't make sense. Um, but bringing it through the context of L2, just like make a base layer that doesn't have to care about OFAC neither because th- the problem of OFAC-ness I would say would come to the R2, would not be a problem of the of the of the of the R1 and shouldn't be a problem of the R1. So maybe, maybe Bitcoin is just also the right place to be the, the, the best L1 possible because simplicity prevented to sort of like have these uh black swan events of what all of a sudden the word we decide is good or bad. And we want this centralship resistance, and I don't want to live in a world that is governed by the US. I mean, I'm French and and you know. I, I like my, my I like my I've seen boobs and pictures and not feeling like uh, like it's going to beep every time someone say no I mean you know like you know there's only about I'm thinking of that like you know I'm saying like you know I don't want to get censored for for uh, for displaying like displaying a picture where there is like a, a breast pop, pop a breast outside or breastfeeding you know that's not something I imagine as a French guy so I don't want a word where you where this happened at the base layer you know what I'm saying. And so, so, so Bitcoin has a simplicity that provides guarantees, and uh, we should leverage that. I love that answer. I, I think that's a great place to leave the conversation. I'm definitely bullish on Starkware and ZK rollups. I'm excited that that's finally coming about, or at least the conversations are happening. Uh, hope to have you and the Starkware team on the podcast again, but thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Have a great day.